All right, first stop, coffee. I always like to stop in and check out Music Millennium and check it out. They've got the Grinch and Mary Lou Who and also the little doggy as well. But Grinchy looks a little, a little less Grinchy. Looks like his heart grew three times the size this day. <laughs> awesome. All right, so I thought I would take a little cut through Laurelhurst Park here. We're in Southeast Portland. Still uh, maneuvering my way into downtown, but I thought I'd take you guys through one of my favorite little parks to just kind of chill at. I actually found a bench here to just kind of chill out for a moment with my coffee. But as I was looking around here, I noticed there's uh, some really cool decorative things here for the festive season. We're gonna go check it out. As I make my way through this incredibly beautiful park, I noticed here in front of me that all the creative Portland folks have decorated a lot of these trees throughout here with ornaments for the holiday season. And there's another tree right down here. And another one. So that's four now. Well, three on video. There was another one right when we first walked in. But all these trees through Laurelhurst are all decked out. So cool. Can you guys see me? Merry Christmas. Merry Creepsmas. Cutting through the neighborhoods leaving the park and just found this guy <laughs> wow that is awesome wearing the Santa hat you're all decked out there I see you got your you got your buddy here with you I see as well is that Mrs. Claus wearing the apron and then we got the big old Santa Santa skeleton and then there's also a little unicorn <laughs> oh that is awesome <laughs> that just made my day all right see you around buddy you might want to you might want to get a jacket or maybe get some meat on those bones it's gonna be a cold winter See you later. These guys are in the spirit here. <laughs> we got three Santas. And if you guys look there on the porch, there's three llamas as well. And they've also got some of the dwarfs right here. <laughs> awesome. Looks like these guys got a little tiny Christmas tree lot. <laughs> That's awesome. And they've even got the little desk where you can go up and purchase it. Here's a good idea. <laughs> Dear dog friends, whoop. Please take a biscuit and put container in the yellow bucket. And then if you guys can see, they've procured these little, it's like little plastic carrots, but if you look closely, there's little dog biscuits inside. <laughs> that is awesome. I know. Just an incredible shot right now. You gotta come down here. Ran into my buddy Adam I haven't seen in a while. How you doing, dude? I'm good. 
Good to see you. I'm good. Just checking out the tree all lit up. I know. We got the tree over here. We got the Oh, that's right. We got the menorah, too. We got the holiday galore going on. Heck, yeah. It's good to see you, brother. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. We got the tree all lit up, very festive. And it's gonna take us to our next location, not too far from here. In the winter months of 1946 through 47, two of America's most infamous gangsters stayed right here in Portland, Oregon. And when we get up there, we're gonna tell you guys more. So stay tuned. We just crept up from the Pioneer Square checking out the tree but I'm standing right in front of this beautiful St. Mary's Cathedral here on the corner of Northwest 18th and Cooch. And they've got it all decked out here for the holidays as well. But right here on the corner of 18th and Cooch is the infamous hideout of a, two of America's most wanted gangsters at the time in the winter of 1947. Bugsy Siegel and M Mickey Cohen stayed here on the, on the run from the the FBI and uh, for racketeering charges and, and embezzlement and things of that nature in Vegas Mickey Cohen was associated with some other well-known gangsters here in Portland and introduced Bugsy to a lot of them and in return found a really good place to hide apparently they were never captured here but we're gonna creep up here and, and take a look at and more of that and there's also a little placard stating that I'm gonna see if I can get that on the video so stay tuned you guys can see this church is absolutely beautiful too Now, other than the placard that sits out of room 308 here at the Tudor Arms Apartments, well, they're now condominiums, is the only remnants or records that I can find of this story. But the more I dug deep and pulled up some names of some other people that Bugsy and Mickey were associated with, the more I, I believe the story myself. There was a lot of jazz musicians here in Portland and a lot of establishments. And Sammy Davis Jr. was also known to, to travel to Portland to perform and whatnot. And he was associated also with Big Jim, Jim Wilkins, who was another Portland mobster, which we'll probably get into later on, a, on another vlog. But like I said, for many years, the story goes that number 308 right here at the Tudor Arms, which would have been, you know, this is the first floor, second, third. So one of these apartments up top here, number 308, I'm not sure if it's on this side or, or what, but right there on the third level is where they would have hit out and being on the lam for racketeering charges in Vegas. Hit out right here in Portland. Now with the Portland city just being built this was the almost the perfect hideout not only was the building brick which would survive fires um, but just a perfect location for people to hide out with upcoming mansions and and places of that nature it was just kind of nestled in the heart with Burnside being the divider between um, you know Northwest and Northeast pretty cool Pretty cool to think they hit out here. Just a beautiful building too. All the details of the architect, including the, the sign here, the main sign entrance, and then above these pillars, some really cool decor. Let's go in here and see what it looks like inside here. So if I'm 
I'm guessing right, this would have been the first floor here, second, third. So depending upon where these windows here sit, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, I think there's those two little ones may be the bathroom windows. So it's either this end one or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or see, it's one of the end ones there. Maybe, I'm, I'm guessing. I'm gonna see if I can get pictures of the actual uh, little placard in here too that that talks about it. Let's see if we can find somebody to let us in or maybe see if management's here. I got this call box here. Let's see if I can maybe just call the front desk. check it out you guys I actually found it so check it out this is incredible it is reported that Bugsy Siegel and Mickey Cohen two of America's most famous gangsters hid out in room 308 at the Tudor Arms apartments for several months during the winter hour winter of 1946 through 1947 during a nationwide manhunt for them after they were indicted for racketeering in Los Angeles. And there it is, you guys. 308. So cool. This is so cool. It's a great spot to hide, too. Long hallways. And I think this is the one from when we saw the shots outside where I showed you what window I thought it might be. This was the one because it may have had the balcony out back and with the mansions and everything that went up in Portland back in the 40s, late, uh, early 40, or late 40s, excuse me, that would have been a perfect hideout. So cool. They've even got their tree all decked out here in the lobby, giving it that holiday vibe. Very cool. Oh my gosh, you guys, that was so cool. We actually got in. What a great place to, to hide out, really. Just beautiful, beautiful building, really. And no one would imagine that that's where two of America's most infamous gangsters would have hid out for an entire holiday season, pretty much. Very cool. Very, very, very cool. Yep, not in Vegas, right here in the heart of Northwest Portland during the holiday season on the run from the feds for racketeering charges. Mickey Cohen was a lot more familiar with a lot of the well-known Portland gangsters at the time and went ahead and introduced Bugsy to a lot of well-known affiliates here in Portland when they both teamed up uh, down in Vegas earlier to collaborate to come to Portland to basically uh, try and build a casino out on Savi's Island. There was proposed plans that Bugsy, well by the way, his friends didn't call him Bugsy because he didn't like to be called Bugsy, but they planned on building a entire casino out at Savi's Island, which never actually fell through. And Portland was a greater place to hide out because it wasn't as well known as it is today. A perfect place to hide out with all these huge mansions and everything around them. Kind of obscured where the actual location was. And then also you can see all these older style buildings have these, these uh, fire escapes. So it would have made for a quick, a quick getaway in case they needed to duck out of town. This is where Bugsy Siegel and Mickey oh. Cohen, two of like America's most wanted gangsters at the time, hid out. Oh boy. In the winter wow. months here in Portland back wow. in 1947. So I'm just out kind of doing a little 
vlog on it for my channel. That's pretty cool, man. Yeah, you yeah. got, so you do a YouTube as well? I do a YouTube as well, and I was just walking from here. I did not know about this building, so thank you for telling me. Oh, heck me. yeah. Um, I'll put in mine too. <laughs> nice, what's your channel name? It's called Bankrupt Nomad. Bankrupt Nomad, Yeah. very cool name, I Thanks, like that. Yeah. I, I follow a lot of nomads, actually. Yeah, me too, so I'll, I'll look at your channel. Very cool, yeah, Clearski the Creeper. Good to meet you, bro. Good to meet you too. All right, brother.